But Ty Flowers and the Sharks have been down this road before, and they're off and running as Flowers hits a three. It's a 5 nothing lead for LIU. Well, both teams are off the tough starts, no doubt, but I think any, anybody on this court or on the staff is just happy to have a game the way COVID has struck again. But five quick points from LIU. Two things that they just did on two possessions that will concern me if you're Sacred Heart. Number one, this is the biggest team in the biggest team in the NEC. They got like an Atlantic 10 size front line. Also, they can shoot the threes, and they shoot a lot of them. Ty Flowers knocks down the three and then looks at the Sacred Heart bench. And Anthony Latina calls a timeout. A minute and 11 seconds in. Ty Flowers has all eight points. And let's talk about him. The graduate forward from Waterbury, Connecticut. He was a star at Sacred Heart High School, part of that juggernaut in Connecticut high school basketball that won three CIAC championships. Went to UMass with the head coach, Derek Kellogg. Has come here back for a graduate senior season. He is an outstanding player. Well, he's outstanding. He's a coach's nightmare, an opponent coach's nightmare, because he's a walking mismatch. At 6'9", as you just saw, Randy, he's knocked in two threes. He can shoot the three, 37%, 80 from the field, from the free throw line. Now you put a little one on him, and he'll post you up. You saw that in the yeah. first possession. He's second in rebounding. He's first in blocks on the team. He's a first-team preseason pick for a reason. And also... Last two game, last year, two games, which these teams split. Flowers had 43 points and 18 rebounds. And you know, Joe, he's believe it or not down a little bit this year from 17 points a game and 8.1 rebounds a game last year, coming in at 15 points a game and six and a half boards a game. Alex Watson from the corner for three out of the timeout. The Pioneers have their first points of the night. Well, that's a big answer from uh, from uh, right away from Sacred Heart. And there's Isaac uh, Conte. We're going to be talking a lot about him. I mentioned that front line like an Atlantic 10. This is a young man who averaged a double-double at Hofstra, uh, transferred here for his uh, for his final year. So they, they have a huge front line that can play inside and can play outside. Yeah, Isaac Canty coming from Hofstra, but he began in Georgia. This is his third team. He's from Brooklyn, so he's come for his last year of eligibility to play at LIU. Nico Gallette lays it in. And the Pioneers trail by five. I talked to the coach, I got fancy. Keon Burns for Conti. Flowers posting up in the block against Aaron Clark. They kick to Burns, who takes a three and misses. A freshman from White Plains, New York, who went under recruited, gets the start today. A real latecomer. Had a big growth spurt at Lee Academy. Offensive rebound, Tyler Thomas, an up fake by Alex Watson, and the kick. Straight away three, Aaron Clark in and out, but an offensive rebound by Gallette. Out to Tyler Thomas, the NEC's leading scorer at just over 19 points a game. Had an open look, but it doesn't go for him. Yeah, and you mentioned Keon Burns. The reason why he's starting is it's LIU is out without one of their starters, Kendall Davis and Alex Rivera. Actually, they've been going back and forth. Kendall Davis has started two games. Okay, in the 10 and Alex Rivera 8. He, so you're losing a starter if you're LIU and a valuable player coming off the bench. Uh, both players are quote-unquote ill. So um, Think of that as you will. It's, a, it's an interesting time of year, needless to say. That would be an understatement. But uh, it's an LIU team that's picked fourth. And they're, if they get any kind of production from their guards, okay, Rivera, Trey Wood, the point guard who's got the ball now, uh, Kendall Davis, Keon Burns, uh, this young man, Noel Crawford, they're going to be a player in this in this uh, championship run, if you will, in the NEC because they got a dynamite front line. Noble Crawford from Orlando, a little push shot in the paint is an air ball, and the Pioneers get it back down ten to five. Ty Flowers with the first eight points of the game, forcing Anthony Latina to call his first time out a little bit more than a minute into this one. So the Pioneers trying to take care of the basketball here, value their possession. Alex Watson misses from just inside the elbow. Pull-up jump shot contested. And this one's thrown away on the high-low by Wood. Back to the Pioneers on another turnover from the Sharks. Three and seven, but winners of two consecutive. One of them against Merchant 
Marine playing against a not a Division One opponent and winning 106 to 48, but certainly a quality win over Army, 90 to 65 to close out non-conference play. Well, it's funny, you know. That do you count the Merchant Marine game? I do because if you're not going to count that, then don't count the upper level games you play. They okay? also played UConn this year. <laughs> That's so. what I'm saying. So let's not count that. The bottom line is you got to go out, and most of the time, if you're a starter. Okay, you're not going to get your minutes in a 50-point game. So the bottom line here is you got to play no matter who you're playing. Ty oh. Flowers is feeling himself today. 11 points as he takes a three over Nico Gallet. Now listen to this game for Ty Flowers against Merchant Marine. 27 minutes, 24 points, 15 rebounds, 6 assists, and 4 steals. He can When he's on, okay, when he's on, he can be as good, good as player, not only in this league, but in the mid-major level, period. Galetta wild one. Flowers defended. Another thing he does well. And yeah, Joe mentioned that he's a little bit down this year from his production last year, but maybe that game against Merchant Marine is what will get him going. He certainly looks great tonight. Opening up a 13-5 lead for LIU on NEC front row. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next, the best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. opener 11 points from Ty Flowers I'm sure containing him is part of the keys to the game for Sacred Heart they haven't been able to do that so far what are the other keys Joe well it's funny for LIU I, I want to say don't get three happy meanwhile they've made a couple of threes early on three My, for four three for four my point is is that they've made 16 threes against Army I get it and they shoot 27 triples per game 44% of their shot attempts are from beyond the arc. They are 27%, I hate to throw all these numbers at you, on the road from three. But as I mentioned, they got the biggest front line in the league. Go inside, and that's a weakness of Sacred Heart, their inside game. So I don't want them to get three happy. And number two, they got to force the drive. Get out on Sacred Heart, take away the threes. With that size on front, you can block some shots, and you can also alter some. And then for Sacred Heart, they have to have offensive composure. This LIU team will pick up full court. They'll trap a little bit. They want you to speed up. So if you're Sacred Heart, don't panic. Be fundamentals and get high percentage shots. And then, of course, they got to finish their possessions on defense. It's a fancy way of saying block out, limit second shots. This is a huge LIU team. You can't let them get second opportunities. Those are my keys, Randy. And the drive by Wood was contested. Contavio Dutrell on the floor for the Pioneers. He entered before the media timeout. The look for him, who was the second best rebounder in the league last year, to be that line of defense off that tough Sharks front line that you referred to. Absolutely. You and I talked about this off the air. It's a great substitution, and we're, neither one of us are surprised, not surprised to see Dutrell in there. Actually performed well against them in two matchups. In, 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 in 44 minutes in the two games, he had 16 points and 20 rebounds. So 8 points, 10 rebounds, and half a game is a pretty good number. And they need him in this game to match up with the LIU size. He averaged almost 9 rebounds a game last season. Colette is blocked as he goes up against Conte. Flowers is 4 for 4 from the floor, 3 for 3 from behind the arc. He feeds inside to Conte, looking to skip it. Stolen by Thomas, ahead to Galette. And Trey Wood races back and disrupts things. The ball out of bounds, and it is a foul on Wood. And they're going to give this one to Crawford. Well, they give it to Crawford. Wood with a good hustle play, but Crawford a little bit late to get there, the last to reach in. Substitutions here for Sacred Heart. Bryce Johnson back in, and Joey Riley, the junior guard from Cromwell, Connecticut, transferred from Holy Cross. It's given really solid minutes to Anthony Latina this year. 
It was a great hustle play, as you mentioned, by Trey Wood, taking away that easy basket. Last year in the 20-point win here at Sacred Heart, Trey Wood had 13 points. Thomas goes at Crawford, and Noble Crawford picks up a second personal. Yeah, that's a little dangerous if you're uh, LIU. Your guards get in foul trouble. We already talked. You just saw the replay there of the foul by Crawford. We already talked about how LIU is out without two of their top guards, Kendall Davis, who averages 20 minutes, and Alex Herrera, 25 minutes. So if you're going to you're gonna start Q Burns and you're going to start and you're going to play Noble Crawford, those young men get in foul trouble. You've got to go a little deeper into your bench. Tyler Thomas to the line. He has his first point of the night. Thomas averaging 19.2 points a game, which is actually even better than last year. <laughs> 19.1 points a game. You know what? I don't know why I keep bringing up last year, but I was just thinking about the two matchups they played. Remember, not too long ago, we played back-to-back right. games. So losing players to foul trouble, not having depth, uh, was, a, was a, a huge part of the game. Contavio Dutrell, the good defensive play against Eral Penn, who's also a terrific presence in the front court. 15.2 points a game, good for third in the conference. And there is Isaac Conte. Knock it down the three. Two for 14 before that three-pointer. But, man, LIU can't miss from downtown. They're four for five. And Conte's got that little bit of a hitch in his shot, but he showed good backspin, nothing but the bottom of the net. Joey Riley with the answer. This year averaging just under six points a game. And, Randy, he's going to have to step up because Mike Sixsmith is out because he also, like the LIU guards, is ill. Eral Penn takes a three and misses, and it's going to the Pioneers as Crawford pokes it away. Yeah, Joey Riley should see more minutes, and he already averages 20 minutes a game, but a young man from that great East Catholic right. program here in Connecticut. Com comes from a great basketball family. Uh, dad and uncle both coach, and uh, he's going to have to start nice and clean shaven, got a haircut. Probably went home, and, and dad didn't like the way he looked, got a haircut and clean shaven. He looks like a new... Uh, a new person. He's going to have to step up. And let me tell you this, Randy. He's very capable of doing that. Despite all that hot shooting from LIU, Sacred Heart is within two possessions. Even though LIU opened up an 11-0 lead early. Or an 8-0 lead, I should say. Reach in foul. And here comes Flowers after a brief blow on the bench. And we talk about that great East Catholic program. A shame that Sacred Heart had to close its doors in Waterbury. They were just an absolute powerhouse in Connecticut high school basketball. And Ty Flower is a big part of three championship teams. The number four recruit in Connecticut coming out of college, coming yeah. out of high school. They, a monster program, and a, like a, unfortunately, like a lot of uh, private schools, had to close down financial issues. But uh, he is certainly, uh, his legacy in college basketball, especially LIU, has, has uh, made him, you know, one of the top players. And he's a pro prospect simply because of his size and his skill level. Well, that is some grittiness and toughness down low from Contavio Dutrell that the Pioneers have desperately needed. We didn't see it a whole lot in the non-conference. That's the Dutrell that the Pioneers need. He got his nose dirty there, fought against three defenders, the soft touch to lay it in, and now we've got a whistle after the basket. The Pioneers within four. Well, Dutrell was a DNP last game, and he yeah. wasn't ill. You know what? A lot of people think you and I are ill, but we're here. We're, we're here. And they're not wrong. <laughs> Bryce Johnson, the steal on the inbounds play to Dutrell down the lane for two more. And the Pioneers have cut it to two. Take that, Coach Latina, for not playing me last game. Do tell. He's got four. The Pioneers trail 16 to 14. Thomas on Flowers. So the two best stars on the floor for their respective teams matching up. Here's Andre Washington. Seeing time at the point guard. Kicking out and Eral Penn knocks down the three. That is a fifth three-pointer of the first half for the Sharks. There's a young man who obviously spent a lot of time in the gym. Look at oh, that shot. Aaron Clark, the circus shot. Counted in the foul. Wow, what a basket. Well, what's great about Aaron Clark, Joe, 
are, is that he can score with the right hand. Uh, just a, just a, one of the best guards, if not the best point guard in the conference. He's smart. He's strong. He lost some weight. That's made him quicker. That's a phenomenal shot. You called it. Hit the nail right in the head. He'll be on the line when we come back. It's 19-16 LIU in the conference opener from the Pitt Center. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next. The best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. My old school didn't have a master's program in media and broadcasting, and so I knew I had to find a place that was going to offer that and that I could also still play football at a high level. Sacred Heart checked every single box. They have a growing program that's doing very well and it's in the media hub of the world. I've learned things that you wouldn't learn from just being in a classroom unless your teachers were professionals who have actually done the things that we want to do. That's what puts Sacred Heart above everyone. Sacred Heart has woken up after trailing eight nothing a little bit more than a minute into the game. The Pioneers starting to heat up from the floor. And they are within three. Aaron Clark with a big energy play. And, you know, for a team that brings back a lot of firepower from last year, still maybe looking for, we know Tyler Thomas is going to be the scorer. He's the go-to guy. But Aaron Clark is such an important leader for this team in these tight conference matchups. Well, he's got experience. He's played in important games here at Sacred Heart. And he's got the skill and the heart. And he's got the head to play in this game. There, there's a number of... You look at Tyler Thomas, first team preseason. Uh, Aaron Clark could play as well as his way into first team uh, when the whole thing's said and done. And I mentioned uh, the front line of Ty Flowers, Isaac Conte, and you saw Eral Penn. Hey, Randy, Eral Penn last year shot 32% from three. This year he's 30, 36%. Now, you may say that's not a big a deal, but last year 17 of his shots, percentage of his shots, were, were, were threes this year Randy he's up to 42 percent of his shots so almost half of his shots are threes so he's really gotten the confidence oh I thought he was going to line one up there to make that shot from a distance Ty Flowers a couple of tips crashing the offensive glass off the Andre Washington three as Penn passed up the three to dish to Washington Sacred Heart down two with a chance to tie it here. Dutrell with a jam, and we are tied at 19. Well, you love the way Dutrell is playing. Three big baskets in the paint. He looks, he's playing a lot bigger than he is, but Tyler Thomas gets credit for that. A terrific change of speed dribble. Got himself into the gap, made the pass. Thomas is a good passer. For a, You don't think of him as a passer because he scores and shoots so much, but he can dish it. Washington. His little floater is short. Bryce Johnson, he's a forward who can really handle the basketball like a guard. Right. And this will end up with a Joey Riley three. Off the mark, offensive rebound, Bryce Johnson. Aaron Clark, the kick to the corner. Thomas for the lead, for three, and he rips it. And now it's a timeout from LIU as Derek Kellogg wants to talk about it. 22-19, Pioneers. Well, one of my keys to game for Sacred Heart was offensive composure. They got down big early, 8 nothing, 13-5. They're able to penetrate, make good decisions, and then knock it in some baskets. A 30-second timeout from Derek Kellogg, so both head coaches have had to use their use it or lose it timeout here in the first. You like this timeout from Coach Kellogg as the Pioneers take their first lead on that three by Thomas. Yeah, I do like it because, number one, he knows his team better than anybody. Right. He can't be happy with the fact that he's leaving Tyler. You never should leave Tyler Thomas alone, okay? He was wide open. And second of all, they got to stop dribble penetration. Thomas and Aaron Clark have been able to get into the lane. So all of a sudden, LIU's not playing with the same intensity that they were early. And, you know, everyone thinks the game is won and lost in the last five minutes or the last minute. Sometimes it's won and lost in the first half. Sacred Heart on an 8-0 run over the last minute and a half or thereabouts. Part of a bigger run of 15-3 for the Pioneers behind 5-6 of six shooting 
from the floor on their last six shots. And let's see out of a timeout. Kellogg is an experienced coach and a very good coach. Let's see what they're looking to do. Probably isolate Isaac Conte inside. So defense control. I told, can't tell you, Cantavio Dutrell has made some three three huge baskets, but I think what's more important is going to be his defense on Isaac Conte. Well, he was really banging. Were you watching him and Conte? Yes. Off the ball? Yep. That's the kind of physicality the Pioneers need from someone in their front court. And Dutrell is that kind of player with his third team, Contavio Dutrell from North Alabama, then Harkham, and now Sacred Heart, but a star here in high school and another great program, Trinity Catholic. There's a lot of talent from the Catholic schools here in Connecticut on this floor today between LIU and Sacred Heart. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, Connecticut, for the size of a state, and you, you look at two fouls picked up by uh, Ty Flowers, it's going to be interesting to see uh, what Coach uh, Kellogg is going to do. He's going to keep him in. But for the size of the state, Connecticut at one time used to be really a fertile ground for recruiting. But nowadays, Randy, a lot of these kids aren't finishing high school here. They're going on to prep school you know, as early as after freshman year, sophomore year. So the talent level has dropped somewhat. Conte rips that one away from Dutrell. I'm going to watch that matchup tonight. Conte and Dutrell. Flowers feeds Penn for a jump shot. Off the mark, defensive board, Contavio Dutrell. See, now's the time for LIU to get a basket. And I think the best way they can get a basket with this team is to go inside. They can't get three happy. That was my big key early on in the game for LIU. Riley off the skip pass, a catch and shoot that was wild. It's an air ball, but Alex Watson is there. His reverse layup wouldn't go. Another offensive rebound for Dutrell in the kick. Thomas a three. Good! What work by Watson and Dutrell down low to get Thomas that three ball. And that's a big time shot. That was two or three feet beyond the three point line. But why is Cantavio Dutrell? You know, I love the forwards that. Sacred Heart has Bryce Johnson, Nico Gallet at 6'7". It's really, really improved. Ten points, almost nine rebounds. But they're not post players. They're like perimeter big men. Having Dutrell somewhat dominate early on is huge for this Pioneer team. He has the defensive rebound and makes the good outlet pass to Riley. Off the window, no good. And LIU gets the rebound. That is Keon Burns with the board. Flowers. Oh, my goodness, what a player. With a hand in his face, he hits another three. Ty Flowers, four for four from downtown. 14 points. Tyler Thomas, the most improved player, the leading scorer, says, I want this battle. I want to go with you, Ty Flowers. Thomas answers with two. Pioneers by five. I mean, we really do have two of the great talents going up against each other here in Flowers and Thomas. The turnaround spin shot, and that's a wild shot, but it looked pretty good. That's how good he is. That's big-time college basketball moves to get a shot off like that. Johnson kicking. Riley a three. Off the mark. Tuttrell hoping to poke it away from Conte at the last moment. Conte secures it. Coming up on seven minutes to go in the first. Sacred Heart by five. Flowers against Thomas. Burns in a mismatch against Riley. An unfriendly roll. It spins out. Bryce Johnson the rebound. Looking to push the floor. Burns knocked it away from him from behind. Big substitutions coming in for Sacred Heart when we come back. This has been an entertaining first 13 minutes of the conference opener between LIU and Sacred Heart. It's the Pioneers over the Sharks, 27-22. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next, the best in Connecticut higher education, outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. My old school didn't have a master's program in media and broadcasting, and so I knew I had to find a place that was going to offer that and that I could also still play 
football at a high level. Sacred Heart checked every single box. They have a growing program that's doing very well and it's in the media hub of the world. I've learned things that you wouldn't learn from just being in a classroom unless your teachers were professionals who've actually done the things that we want to do. That's what puts Sacred Heart above everyone. Big Red is feeling pretty good about what he's seeing. And of course, this is in between the first and second semester, so it's a light crowd today, but for those who are in attendance, Big Red entertaining them as is the home team, up 27-22. Yeah, I got to tell you, Big Red didn't get the memo. He doesn't have a mask on. <laughs> What's up with that? He's got a big head, but no mask. Well, yeah, well, there's no mask that size, I guess, <laughs> for Big Red. That must be it. Plus, he's boosted. Yeah, well. Which we're happy about. We, You know, we don't. All you can do is laugh, right? We don't want to make too light of the situation we've all kind of been through for the last couple of years. And, and certainly every aspect of life has been asked to make adjustments. And our student athletes and coaches and athletic trainers and administrators and everybody on college campuses around the world still trying to figure out and navigate what is now a really uncertain time, kind of a fifth wave of this pandemic but we hope everybody out there is doing well and if you're not hopefully on the men soon in this kind of crazy time here as we wind out 2021 Aaron Clark no look to Zach Faffenberger into the game his reverse layup goes off the bottom of the rim he's got to go to the strong side on that he's got to use his left hand put his body Randy between the ball and the defender and come away with it worse to foul. He got a little cute, went to the other side. Now, he hasn't played a whole lot. Missed all the last year, played a little bit this year. He's still trying to catch his stride. They whistle Nico Gallette for the foul on Eral Penn as Penn posted up Gallette. Where Nico Gallette, the six foot six sophomore from Rahway, New Jersey. First in the NEC with 8.6 rebounds a game, and he's averaging an even 10 points a game. He's really emerged here in his sophomore season. He has to back off as E. Rawl Penn takes it to the cup for two. I realize that LIU 6 for 10 from three, but they got to get some tough twos. That's E. Rawl Penn. Again, a preseason pick by the coaches to be first team. All right, he's like a football player out there. Got to be able to get into the lane and get those tough twos. Puts you in a better position also to get offensive rebounds. Nico Gallette takes the three. Ty Flowers to his right hand, his offhand, off the mark. Gallette floats, and they call him for the offensive foul. Nice dish on the fast break from Clark after Thomas led him into the front court, but it leads to Gallette coming down Main Street uncontrollable. Well, I gotta, I gotta, I'm going to tell you, I think the refs missed both calls, one on each end. I thought uh, Jay Cook, who just came into the game, 6'9", sophomore from... Uh, Upstate New York got an over the back, was not able to get that rebound. And I thought that was not a charge at the other end. I didn't think, uh, I don't know who that was. Trey Wood did not have position on the driver that time. So that's just my opinion. And it's funny, I haven't coached in 15 years, and I realized real soon, broadcasting these games, that the referees a lot better than, than I thought they were when I was coaching. It's funny, in, prep, in preparing for these games, Flowers, misses i watched our game from last year and you made the same point i did which is a great point it's true that's and, why i'm and, saying and it. the more years i suppose you're removed right from the intensity of being on the sideline maybe the more appreciation you get for how fast this game is and how difficult a job it is that these referees really have and there's no doubt i mean i i, I referees don't pay me so i don't have to be nice <laughs> to them you know what i'm saying but i really see it's a tough game to officiate the big thing is to be involved and be consistent, and I and I and, I've, and I, I think they do for the most part. These referees do a tremendous job. I just didn't like the last two, the one no call, and then the uh, charge called on LIU that those last two possessions. Well, on that possession for Sacred Heart, great hustle play by Alex Watson to keep the ball with the Pioneers, and it does lead to a foul on LIU as Zach Faffenberger had it ripped out of his hands off the miss from Tyler Thomas but it was Alex Watson who followed his own shot that led to this possession and this opportunity. You got to give uh, Sacred Heart and their staff a ton of credit. They were down big early. 
it didn't look like LIU was going to miss. They picked up their defense, which in turn has helped their offense. Having Cantavio Dutrell come off the bench, uh, nine points, five rebounds already in limited minutes this half has been a big boost for the Pioneers. Watson from the corner. Almost got the friendly second bounce. Flowers taking on Clark behind the back with his dribble to the cup and the soft touch off the window. <laughs> and that was a foul, too. That should have been a three-point play. What a heck of a move. Uh, changing speed, changing direction, strong hand to weak hand, weak hand to strong hand, being able to finish in contact. Wood inside for Conte, looking to get the lead back for LIU, and it's the Sharks <laughs> on top, 28-27. And you can't let Isaac Conte get the ball that deep, 6-8. About 230 pounds. You got if he gets that deep, Randy. You got to muscle yourself around or finesse yourself around in front of him. Make him throw over the top. Bryce Johnson kicks it. Watson. They double down on him. Good job by Cook to get out. Now Clark dead on downtown, and the Pioneers have the lead again at 30 to 28. Just a great possession. You know, you, you, you're sitting there and you're watching and you're ready to give LIU a lot of credit for taking away the dribble drive, recovering, but making that extra pass, Aaron Clark knocks it in. Anthony Latina wondering why there's a whistle. So are we. All we do know is we're going to break. 30-28, Sacred Heart. When you live where we live, she dropped her toy. Thank you. You're when you meet the kind of people we get to meet, me out there, Wally. share their seasons, their good times, and when they need a helping hand, you pick up pretty quick that every little thing is a little more than it seems. It's my Tuesday morning. It's my helper. It's my livelihood. It's my pleasure. It's at the heart of the community. It's more than the food. It's my big why. LIU and Sacred Heart tonight in the conference opener. It's the Pioneers now on top as we've gone back and forth. Darren Kellogg, the head coach of LIU, comes to Brooklyn from Amherst. and This is a well-established coach. This was a big get for LIU here in the NEC to get Derek Kellogg. Well, he's a basketball lifer. I remember when I was at Duquesne, I tried to recruit him out of Cathedral High School in Springfield. Was a great player. Um, played for a Connecticut AAU team. Um, Played for John Calipari, four regular season Atlantic 10 tournament. They were 111 and 24. You see DK right there. He left the school fourth and assist, so he was a true point guard. But he was two years at George Mason, George Mason under Jim Laranega, who's now the coach at uh, Miami. One year at Youngstown State, and he was eight years with Calipari at Memphis. Goes to UMass as the head coach in nine years, two NITs, one NCA. I guess not good enough. He moves on to LIU. In his first year, he's um, a Northeast Conference champ. And put all that aside, good guy. Normal. No ego. Fun to talk to. Uh, honest. And this is a great possession at a timeout. Go inside to your horse. Isaac Conte gets the good position. Dutrell better start thinking about fronting that big guy because he's getting the ball, Randy, in a position, Conte is, where all he has to do is catch and turn. He's got nine, and he's tied the game at 30. Average a double-double, as you mentioned earlier, Joe, at Hofstra last year. Aaron Clark taking off. Again, to his right hand. That's off the money. And LIU looking at a fast break from the corner. Jake Cook missed the three. Watson, nice job boxing out Keon Burns to get the defensive rebound. Tyler Thomas has 10 for Sacred Heart. Now, with Jay Cook out there, that's because of foul trouble. Here's a young man. I'm not downgrading. Played in nine and ten games, about eight and a half minutes. But he's not a player that's normally out there this part of the game. He's now one for four from three this season. Tyler Thomas hitting the deck. 
Noble Crawford lost the dribble, but then got it back. They move it up the floor for Burns. A three. Keon Burns. And that young man's got potential, okay? He's long. He's lean. He's 6'5". He plays about 13 minutes a game. He's over 40% from three. Again, he had a growth spurt and was maybe projected as a Division II player. Really didn't get many Division I looks. LIU got him late as... Noble Crawford goes down hard. And that's going to be a push off on Tyler Thomas' offensive foul, but talking to some of the coaches for LIU before, they're really happy that Keon Burns went under-recruited. Again, had that growth spurt, a terrific senior season, and then finished off at Lee Academy before coming to Long Island University. Just a good defensive stance um, by Crawford. He moved his feet, and you saw in that replay, Randy, that Tyler Thomas extended that left arm a little bit to create space. Tough to get away with that these days with three officials. Burns, another good look from three. Both Thomas and Johnson go up. Johnson emerges with a rebound and then loses the basketball. He went up against four defenders. Trey Wood the other way, the scoop on the fast break. See, that's what Trey Wood is. Sorry, Randy, that's what Trey Wood is good at. He's a human, he's a one-man fast break. He gets the ball in position. He's going one speed to the rim, has the ability to rise. Obviously, that one-hand little layup. It's a tremendous fast break and, a, and an easy basket for Wood. And you talk about the fast break, Joe. LIU outscoring Sacred Heart on the fast break, 14 to nothing. You think they want to step on the gas a little bit here? Well, they do play fast, and they, they have been shooting a three ball today. So, and, and um, that you know, that's why... You look at this game, and you see, Randy, I don't have the thing in front of me, but after a few minutes, LIU looked like they were going to win. Yep. Then all of a sudden, Sacred Heart turns into another gear. They looked like they were going to win, and now you're looking at a four-point lead after that free throw. LIU is maintained. So in a game, you know, and it's funny, when I talk to kids and I teach them basketball, and um, I, 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 I always say, you know, I watch sometimes players miss a shot, and they get down on themselves. Why? It's not like baseball, right? You get up in baseball, you strike out. You got to wait 45 minutes to get up again. Basketball, you can redeem yourself. And when you play fast, there's so many possessions, and that's how this game is going back and forth. So, Joe, Aaron Clark is so good at getting to the line. He gets there. He hits two as we're under a minute to go in the first half. Is the way to combat the fast break exactly that? Get a guy like Aaron Clark to kind of dictate the pace of the game and slow it down. Dutrell with a big swat on Wood who tries to take off. And he gets blocked with three on the shot clock. Well, you want to play to your strengths. So Sacred Heart is a team that runs and shoots the three. But also, you know, when you're playing against a team that's bigger up front, you got to have good possessions. There's the replay of, of the block. Good job by Dutrell. So Dutrell with six points, six rebounds, and now a block. Three on the shot clock. They get it in a pen to Flowers from the corner. And he missed the three. 40 seconds to go in the first half. Sacred Heart, you wondered if they would try for a two for one. Not going to happen here. And in fact, Clark turns it over to Flowers. Up to Wood. Throws up the lob. And down it goes on the alley-oop to tie Flowers. Well, first of all, it was a well-executed play on the out-of-bounds play. Three seconds. They were getting an open look. Good defense for LIU. Sacred Heart needs a shoot with four or less. That will give them a chance for a second shot. And it also will not give LIU a chance at a run out. Seven seconds after that play, that should be in the NEC top nine. Now Clark to his right hand, it's good. Just before the buzzer, a big basket by Aaron Clark again. The lefty really dominated. Floor to begin the game, three for three from downtown to start this one. He threw down an electric alley-oop dunk in the final seconds of the first half. Aaron Clark answered with a terrific basket in the final seconds. And here's Watson from the corner to tie the game. He misses. Erol Penn gets up over Bryce Johnson to grab the rebound. Yeah, great play designed out of the uh, halftime talk, if you will. Tyler Thomas has the ball in his hands, has the uh, option to make a play for himself or his teammate. Randy, he made the right decision. Watson was wide open, couldn't knock in the three. Contavio Dutrell battling with Conte down low, and Isaac Conte is whistled for the foul, an offensive foul. Derek Kellogg is hot. He went racing down the sideline to plead his case. Well, Dutrell gets the start in the second half for obvious reasons. In 14 minutes, six points and six rebounds, and we mentioned a number of times 
much needed against this big LIU front line. He had a couple of blocks as well, and there he is, up and under move. Dutrell missed the layup. Yeah, that's been his bugaboo. He, he has a tendency to miss some bunnies, but you got to be happy if you're Sacred Heart because you've gotten an open three from Watson, a beautifully executed pick and roll. He missed the layup. Eral Penn missed the three, the offensive rebound, and put back by Conte also spins out. Tyler Thomas with a rebound. Thomas up fakes the three. Aaron Clark met by Trey Wood. Takes him on. And then nearly gave it up to Flowers. Watson's there to pick it up. Bryce Johnson picks up his dribble. The bounce pass. Thomas lost control of it. That gets swatted all the way back to Anthony Latina by Conte on the Johnson layup attempt. Now the Euro and the scoop. No good for Trey Wood. Defensive rebound Aaron Clark. The Pioneers playing with pace. Tyler Thomas kicks out. Watson didn't have the three. Thomas, one more pass. Watson from the corner. Missed it. Too strong. Randy, those are good possessions by Sacred Heart. Unselfish, making the extra pass. Watson's right there with the last two, last two threes, just not able to knock them in. Flowers against Clark. That is a mismatch. Wood, open. Missed the three. The rebound by Penn on the putback attempt. That wouldn't go. Out near the three-point line. Burns picked it up to Flowers for three. No good. Watson gets crushed as he goes up. And he's fouled by Keon Burns. Randy, I, I, I didn't understand that last possession. You got Tyler Flowers, 6'9", on Aaron Clark, six foot on a good day. Okay, there's a replay there of the foul. It's a good call right there. Um, so you got a mismatch. Now, I'm okay with Tyler Flowers kicking it out, right? But he's kicking out to Trey Wood. Now, with all due respect, Trey Wood's 4 for 22 from 3. That's 18%. Tyler Flowers should follow the ball as long as he has Aaron Clark on him in the lane and demand that ball. It's a mismatch. Get the ball back, okay? You're trying to help your team win. Don't be afraid to scream. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Yep. That's not being selfish. That's being smart. Wood misses the 3. I just did not understand that whole possession. So the Pioneers can tie it with a 3. Watson... Got his man to leave his feet. He steps into a better shot after Crawford got off the floor, and Watson knocks it down. Well, we just talked about Watson missing those two open threes, and I love this young man's games. You know, there wasn't really a big future from him, from him, but he's turned into a really, really reliable player. High IQ. He's kind of a stabilizer. Latina thinks he's the best on defense. I like it when he does well because he has earned it. Underneath, Dutrell commits the foul line. Eral Penn on the high-low pass. And Coach, I'm with you. Alex Watson's been fun to watch for five years here at Sacred Heart. And he kind of gave them a spark early on in his career, but then Sacred Heart got some real talent at the guard position, and he lost a lot of minutes. Always worked, always improved his game, and now in this fifth senior, uh, graduate senior season, He's a key player for this team. You know, if you look at this Sacred Heart team, it, it's really, it's kind of top-heavy with Clark and Thomas being the two best players, two best scorers. Nico Galetta stepped up. He's in double figures. Alex Watson is that perfect glue guy that gets open shots, and he's a, see, he's a winner. You know, he like, he's not out there trying to stuff his own pockets. He's doing the things needed to win, and he plays good D. He's bringing up the ball here. He can make the open shot. He missed the two threes, but he comes back and knocks in the 15-footer. You also just saw that replay. Good execution by LIU. Um, Eral Penn at 6-7 was, was fronted. They threw over the top, and they came away with the two free throws. What a motor by Contavio Dutrell. A couple more offensive rebounds. Watson pulled up. Thomas along the baseline for Johnson. The bounce pass. He fights to keep it alive. Thomas from the corner with more on the shot clock. Hits the three to tie the game at 39. Big players make big shots. He just continues to do it. He's three for seven. There's a young man who, by the end of this season, conference season, will be fighting for player of the year. Couple of big plays below the hoop, and a third block by Dutrell as he stops the would-be go-ahead basket by Cook. Now Thomas baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. Wow, how good has Cantavio Dutrell been for this team? 
six points, eight rebounds, and as you mentioned, three blocks. Time out on the floor. We hit our first media break, and we are tied at 39 here with plenty to go in the second half of the conference opener between LIU and SHU. After all your hard work, the studying, practices, and rehearsals, you deserve the best for what's next, the best in Connecticut higher education. Outstanding nursing and health professions programs, premier learning facilities and world-class tech labs, a nationally ranked business school, modern residential, social, and recreational facilities, championship D1 athletics, and pro-level performing arts. Make your next step the best step. Apply now to Sacred Heart University. My old school didn't have a master's program in media and broadcasting, and so I knew I had to find a place that was going to offer that and that I could also still play football at a high level. Sacred Heart checked every single box. They have a growing program that's doing very well, and it's in the media hub of the world. I've learned things that you wouldn't learn from just being in a classroom unless your teachers were professionals who've actually done the things that we want to do. That's what puts Sacred Heart above everyone. The stars are shining here in the NEC opener. Ty Flowers leading LIU with 18 points, 7 for 12 from the floor, 4 for 5 from 3. But Tyler Thomas on the Pioneer side heating up 13 points from the league's leading scorer. He's 4 for 10 from the floor. Three of seven from downtown. Aaron Clark joining him in double figures with 10 points. And Contavio Dutrell seeing more minutes after not playing in the non-conference finale. He gets significant minutes in the conference opener, and he has been a tough presence down low, especially on the offensive glass. Well, I cheated him a rebound. Before we went to break, I said eight rebounds. He's got six uh, points, nine rebounds, and three blocks in 18, 18 minutes and 21 seconds. You know, Ray, I look up and I see 39-39. I coached in this league for about 10 years. This is my 15th year broadcasting. I mean, parity is such an operative word. It's such a storyline. You know, in, in this COVID and there's a transfer portal, all of these things now are, have a lot to do with college basketball. But in this conference, okay, where only typically eight out of the ten teams make the playoffs last year because of COVID-4, every game means something. Now, we just got word recently, and I think it's a great decision by the NEC, that every team is going to make the NEC playoffs. I think that's a great decision by uh, by uh, the commissioner and her staff. And there may be more changes. Who right, knows? No because doubt. this is such a fluid situation. Leagues are kind of changing the rules as we go. And rightfully, I think everybody's accepting it. We have to understand that this is a, a, a time like no other in history. So, you know, the rules maybe change as the situation changes. But let's be honest, last year when they went to four teams, there was a lot of coaches that were upset. You know, you because of the disparities in games played, you could have played less games, finished fourth, and, and, and a team that played more games finished fifth and not get in. So, um, but again, what I agree with what you're saying. We all have to adjust and understand this is not normal. And... Um, the worst thing that we're hopefully we won't have to say is this is turning into normal. Every year seems to be a distraction with COVID, but uh, the NEC is a great league. Uh, it's run really well, and um, it's going to be another exciting year. They whistled Joey Riley on the foul. Did you think he had the position? You know what? I, I was too busy talking. I didn't really see it. <laughs> I love You know what you get with you, Joe? Honesty. And that's the best policy. It really well, is. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know. I don't know. I wasn't right. <laughs> You know, I, I got a, a wife at home of 42 years. She can multitask. I can't. You know, as soon as the grandchildren come over, I'm all screwed up. You know what I'm saying? Well, but you know what? That's why you're together strong for 42 <laughs> years. Honesty. Yeah. Cook misses it. I will say to you that the block charge is indeed, I'm not to, to invent this, but the block charge is the hardest in basketball call for an official. The worst is this new flop thing. Like, why do you call a flop? Like, for example, if I'm backing you in, right, I'm backing you in, I'm backing you in playing bully basketball, and you decide to flop, well, flop, I'm going to score because yeah. you're on the ground. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You're going to stop play. And you're going to give the sign. Or it's just, uh, it's just uh, not a good call. It's a one-point lead now for LIU. As Cook goes one for two from the free throw line. Thomas kicking. Clark for three from the corner. It's good. 
16 for Clark, and it's 42-40, Sacred Heart on top. You know, the stats have him for one assist, but I've seen him make a number of great passes. Sacred Heart has not been able to capitalize most of the time on his uh, possible uh, scoring passes. Joey Riley picks Cook's pocket. After Cook got the better of Riley on the call that got him to the line, Riley gets the last laugh with a steal, and then a reach-in foul is whistled against Trey Wood. A lot of contact on that one possession. You look at uh, Joey Riley. Uncle was his high school coach. Dad coaches at Wesleyan. Um, one of the great players ever to come out of Connecticut basketball. But a lot of contact on that play. And, you know, all, all you look for is is consistency by the officials. Like I made the flop, right? The flop remark. If they call a flop on a guy, the next time that team flops, it's a technical foul. Well, you think if a guy makes a three and goes to the ground or misses a three in the last second, they're going to call a flop and a technical? There's no way. Dutrell fights for the rebound, and the putback is good from Nico Gallette after Flowers took it away from Thomas Gallette. Finishes after Contavio Dutrell repossessed for the Pioneers, and it's a four-point lead for Sacred Heart. And Gallette did not start the second half because of the three fouls. Good move by Latina. Played less than seven minutes, but those two guys now are making their presence known. How do you like this five on the floor? Riley with Thomas and Clark as your backcourt. Gallette and Dutrell up front. Anthony Latina might have something with this five. Well, you know, it's, it's um, a Anthony does not get credit for the job that he does. The last three years, you know, he has the most NEC regular season wins in any program in his conference. And um, I tend to trust what he does. But uh, it, it's a team when healthy that is overloaded with guards and forwards. Now, Dutrell is listening, and he's telling me, what are you talking about? I'm an undersized five-man. If Dutrell can play for the rest of the season like he's playing now, the Sacred Heart team is going to be dangerous. Eral Penn with the miss. That spins out. And, Joe, great point about Sacred Heart's success over the last three years. 32 wins in Northeast Conference play. There's Flowers on the fast break. Throwing down the dunk. Flowers now has 20. And Trey Wood, you know, he had an opportunity to play 100 miles an hour like players do in AAU. Instead, he slowed down, knew who was coming by him, and he rewarded uh, um, Flowers with the uh, trailing ability. Got his Trey Wood with his seventh assist and only one turnover. Nico Gallette, the offensive rebound off the Riley miss. Gallette and Dutrell really banging down there. A tenth rebound for Dutrell against three defenders. That one is no good, but it ends up with Watson. Aaron Clark a three. No good. Offensive rebound, Sacred Heart. Joey Riley this time out near the three-point line. Take a breath, Randy. This is about the fifth shot on this possession. You cannot fault the intensity of this Sacred Heart team. The teardrop by Aaron Clark is too strong and finally for LIU an offensive rebound from Isaac Conte. Just a tremendous job crashing the glass. Nothing to show for it for Sacred Heart but wonderful effort on the offensive glass that last possession. And you don't get points, but you are wearing down this LIU defense. How much does that do psychologically and physically as we wind down down the stretch in the final quarter of this game? Well, it's a great uh, point by you because, uh, again, I'm going to mention for the third time at least that this is an LIU team playing without two of their regular players. So you're going to get guys that are going to have to play more minutes than they usually do. And if Sacred Heart's going to battle, expect LIU not to wilt, but they're just going to be a little tired at the end of the game. Well, and also a good time to get Dutrell and Gallette a rest. So enter Bryce Johnson and Zach Pfaffenberger. And this is a moment for Zach Pfaffenberger coming back from injury where he doesn't have to be great. He just has to be solid and rebound and bring energy. Riley can't race it down. Sacred Heart throws it away on the fast break attempt, and a gift possession goes back to LIU. Yeah, that's a great call by you, what you just said. He played two minutes in the first half, Pfaffenberger. So if I'm Anthony Latina, I'm saying, look, Zach, get in there and give me three to five minutes where you're going to play 100% on both ends. Don't be afraid to foul. Make sure you wide body, you play good defense, you rebound. If you get a chance to get an open shot, take it. He's that vocal guy that Sacred Heart could really use. This is not a t really vocal team. Doesn't mean they're not good teammates, it's just not their personality. 
Riley a three off the Thomas steal, and he nails it. A five-point lead for Sacred Heart, the largest of the game for the Pioneers. Good defense leads to good offense. Conte got the ball in the post, was double teamed. Conte did the right thing and kicked it out to Q Burns in the corner. The ball was about to be reversed, and Tyler Thomas saw it, shot the gap, got the steal, made a beautiful pass down the other end. Riley knocks in the three. Active defense here by the Pioneers. Flowers up against three defenders. Missed the layup. His tap is in. Two more for Flowers. He's got 22. You know, 6'9", long, body control. Not only did he get his own rebound, he tapped it to himself was able to finish he's a big time player with a big time answer he does things on the floor that i don't think anybody does in the nec tyler thomas met by keon burns defensively here's watson the shot clock down to eight the scoop is good watson making it a five point lead again for sacred heart 49 44 pioneers into the block for Conte and a reach in foul. It's on Riley. His second personal as we reach almost the halfway point of the second half. Sacred Heart leads LIU 49-44. When you live where we live, when you meet the kind of people we get to meet, share their seasons, their good times, and when they need a helping hand, you pick up pretty quick that every little thing is a little more than it seems. It's my Tuesday morning. It's my helper. It's my livelihood. It's my pleasure. It's at the heart of the community. It's more than food. It's my big why. You know what? And New Year's resolution. I want to be as happy as that guy. Always smiling, Joe. The beautiful teeth. You know, they just did a commercial for Big Y. Okay, but there's Big Red with the big head. Yes! There is. Well, and he should be happy. 49-44, Sacred Heart. And again, Joe, it's amazing. Sacred Heart went 4-9 and nine in the non-conference. LIU 3-7. and seven. Sacred Heart picked sixth in the preseason, but as you mentioned, they turn it on in conference play the last three years. 32 wins for Sacred Heart, the most in conference play. Last year they went nine and seven, and it is such a trait of an Anthony Latina coach team. Now in his ninth season, after replacing the great Dave Bike and, and, and working with Coach Bike all those years as his assistant, that this team is, just when you think that maybe you count them out, they don't, you, you got some reason for concern, that, right. they're tough. They're gritty. Scrappy. They love that's people a reflection. to doubt them. That's a reflection of, of, of the coach and the staff. These guys have been together. And it's good to see Sean Hone over there, right? Yes. You know, and, um, you know, it's funny. I look at this conference, and a lot of the teams, look at E. Ralph Penn shooting a three. A lot of the teams in the conference, Randy, have a, a form of players that are on the staff. We'll talk about it hopefully later, but uh, we don't want to miss out on some of this fast-paced action. Sacred Heart doesn't want to miss out on the right, fast-paced right. action either because LIU has been certainly dominating that portion of the game. Fast break points favor LIU 18-3. to So LIU wants to speed it up as we hit the 10-minute mark of the second half. A lot of those fast break points are because Sacred Heart is 33% from the field, 33 from three. So long misses mean uh, long rebounds, and uh, LIU has been able to get out and run, and hence the uh, the big difference, 18-3, to three, as you mentioned, in fast break points. Flowers is in trouble, trapped along the sideline. They double-team him. The sideline acts like a third defender. He loses the ball after... He could not stop Flowers in another mismatch. Tyler Flowers, six foot nine against Riley, listed at six feet tall. Well, Anthony Latina, you're screaming at the referee. He he contends that the referee is a fourth defender over there. You got the double team, the sideline, and but he had nothing to do with the ball being knocked off Riley's foot. Good screen set by Penn. 
And Eral Penn has the basketball. Penn with just seven points. He is the second leading scorer in the conference. And on cue, he heats up and makes it a one-point game on the runner. You know, there's a young man, I think, if anyone in this conference is going to get drafted for football, it's going to be him. I asked him, you know, if he ever got recruited in high school to go from basketball to football for his high school team. And he said the coach approached him, but uh, he did not want to play football. He went to St. Francis Academy which is in Baltimore, which is a big, big, big-time uh, football program. So, stuck with basketball basketball and uh, who knows you might be turning on the TV one day and watching them be a tight end for the Dallas Cowboys my team that's 11 and 4 oh way to slip that one in coach <laughs> and misses that three Thomas the kick Riley from the corner no good Zach Pfaffenberger oh. just taking away space down low Bryce Johnson to the cup and he is fouled Johnson will go to the line to shoot two with Sacred Heart leading by one. Yeah, Pfaffenberger did a good job of creating space by pushing off. I, I thought he could have got called for a push-off foul. There's the end of the play. Another one of those young forwards, Bryce Johnson, Nico Gallet, I think that have a ton of potential. Not as inside players per se, but you know, kind of that perimeter foreman that can make the open shot. They're not great shooters yet, but they will improve. And you got to respect them, but they can definitely get to the ball, to the basket, off the dribble. Bryce Johnson's six foot six. He's listed as a forward out of Stockton, California. But doesn't it seem like he plays so comfortable handling the ball no like a guard that right. maybe the guard that that position you're talking about, that swing player, is maybe a more comfortable spot for him? Well, you know, you see teams play four out and even five out to some degree. You know, and everyone talks about the three point line. You know, uh, how, you know, getting three points, the scores are up. But, but really, the one thing that I've noticed that the three-point does is that with so many players now out at the three-point line with handoffs and ball screens, a bigger part of the game, that opens up the lane for dribble drives. And, and I think Sacred Heart has two of the better guys in the conference, Gallette and Johnson, that can get to the rim off the dribble. The problem for Johnson, he has really struggled from the free-throw line this year, 46%. And he gets there a lot, 13 for 28 coming into this game. He goes 0 for 2 there. Remains a one-point lead for Sacred Heart at the moment because Burns takes the three for the lead. It's no good. And another rebound for Contavio Dutrell. Clark across the court to Watson. Sacred Heart spreading the floor. Aaron Clark gets the handoff. Washington gets him on a switch. And a reach-in foul on Andre Washington. Seven fifty-four to go in the second. Winding on down, but still tight between Sacred Heart and LIU in the Northeast Conference men's basketball opener. Piles by one. My old school didn't have a master's program in media and broadcasting, and so I knew I had to find a place that was going to offer that, and that I could also still play football at a high level. Sacred Heart checked every single box. I have a growing program that's doing very well, and it's in the media hub of the world. I've learned things that you wouldn't learn from just being in a classroom unless your teachers were professionals who've actually done the things that we want to do. That's what puts Sacred Heart above everyone. Puck drops, Connecticut ice begins. Locked off the post and there it goes. It's in for UConn and a goal. Sacred Heart scores again. Now a chance for Kulipiak, a shot, a score. High flying, in your face hockey tonight. Sacred Heart takes the lead. And it's the Huskies who are on the board first. A score. Into the net it goes for Kulipiak. Take a look at the Sacred Heart bench. A one-point lead here for the Pioneers. Sean Hohen back there. Coach has got there he notes is. in the iPad out. and Good-looking dude. On the floor just a couple of <laughs> years ago. A real leader for Sacred Heart. Now part of the staff. Yeah, Sean is one of those guys that made himself into a great player. And um, I, I just laugh. I don't laugh. I think it's a great thing that um, Sean is on this staff. You know, his guy as a freshman was under five points, eight points as a sophomore. Wound up being 
um, a senior year, as good as any player in this conference. 32 games played, 32 started, 32 minutes, 18 points, 48 steals. Just a great player, a self-made player. And he knows how to get better because he lived it, so he can make others better. What I get a kick out of this conference, you look at St. Francis U. They got two or three of their former players on their staff. FDU now has Mike Holloway, Jr., Merrimack, Khalif Crawford is a is a student assistant. Sacred Heart was shown in LIU across the way here. Aston Bradley, who was a good player at LIU, so uh, is now on the staff. So I, I like that concept. You know, this is a lower to mid-major conference. It, you know, it's a family-type atmosphere. And to have these coaches hire their former players, I think that says a lot about the character of the coach and, of, of course, of the player. And Sean Holm was very under-recruited as well, so right. it must be really special for him to go work for the guy who believed in him and Anthony Latina. Good call by you, as always. Well, that was the 11th turnover for Sacred Heart. Flowers looking to make him pay. Misses Conte, the offensive rebound. Now the hook shot for the lead. It's good, and LIU is on top as they hit 50, the first of 50, by one over the Pioneers. Third offensive rebound, eighth in the game for Conte. Thomas underneath for a dunk from Dutrell, and he threw it down with a little bit of viciousness. I'm going to say it again. That's the third assist for Tyler Thomas, but he should have like six or seven based on his ability to find the open man. He's playing a complete game. He's not out there today trying to fill his own pockets. Dutrell with eight, a field goal away from a double-double to go along with his 12 rebounds. Penn put that one up. It's no good. Gallette. Great move behind the back on the fast break. Picked up his dribble. He'll go to the left hand. Count the basket and the foul. What moves by Nico Gallette for the and one and a chance to give Sacred Heart a four-point lead. One of the most improved players in the conference. Look at him slice through it. Just a, you know what, Randy? It's a great example of using his strength and his pivot foot. He went right. There was contact. He was double teamed. He pivoted without walking left, found the space, used his body, finished, and, and going for uh, for the N1. 6-7. We talked about can make the open three, uh, can drive to the basket. He's going to be a real, real good player. He's not there yet. He's just got to get a little better. He's about 28% from three. If he can get that to 33 34%, I think he's going to be one of those underside forwards that's going to be able to play inside and out on a more consistent basis. Joe, you went through all the moves he just went through in the low post. How about getting the ball from the backcourt to the front court with a behind-the-back dribble and his ability to handle the ball and get it to that position to even make that move? Did it all on his own. Aaron Clark has fouled, and he goes into the stanchion hard. Fouled by Crawford. After the miss on the three from the Sharks, Aaron Clark slows things down and goes to the line. And that is the fourth foul on Noble Crawford. Yeah, you saw the replay there. It's a it's a it's a noble effort, if you will, uh, by will. by Aaron Clark taking it to Conte. I did not see the the contact. Um that mean that it doesn't mean there was, it just uh did not get a good look at that camera angle. But uh, he's one guy, Randy. And as we get now to six minutes, close to six minutes, the five-point game, Sacred Heart right now is one and two with games decided by six points or less. But this is a young man, Aaron Clark, that you want with the ball in a close game in a big possession. Aaron Clark, such a good free throw shooter. 81% last year, 86% this year, 81% for his career. And Clark goes for the steal. Wood hits the deck. They tie it up. The arrow favors LIU. But on the next jump ball, it'll be Sacred Heart's possession. So that's a big play there by Clark again. You know, it, it's it's Northeast Conference basketball at its best. Two teams playing hard. Two teams with different strengths and different weaknesses going after each other. You know, it's a great hustle play by both teams. And I'm really going to get picky here. So, you know, if you want to criticize me, that's fine. The, even though Trey Wood dove on the floor to get the ball back and called timeout, 
He didn't need to call a timeout, Randy, because it's their jump ball. Yeah. So you, you kind of waste a timeout. So you just you, you grab it, you hold it with two hands, and see if you can get rid of it to a teammate. So – I mean, that's something that I, I imagine has got to drive a coach crazy. You, you, you preach well, always knowing the situation, and you, you have to know when the arrow is in your favor for that exact situation that you just alluded to and we just saw, burning a timeout in a two-possession game. Well, like I said, I don't want to get critical. Here's a young man, Trey Wood, that's got seven assists, one turnover, okay? And the, and, and the numbers are down for LIU, so he's got to play a ton of minutes tonight, and he's playing hard. But I, I don't know if it'll drive a coach crazy, but it's should be a situation where if the head coach doesn't do it, one assistant should say, Trey, great hustle. We need you to keep doing that. But understand, it's a teaching point. Understand that it's our arrow. It's our ball on the possession arrow on a tie-up, so you really didn't have to call it. But I love you to death for for getting that ball back. So another question for you, Coach. Would you rather, if you're Anthony Latina with a six-point lead here, just under six minutes to go, would you rather the arrow right now, or would you rather the other side have one less timeout? I, I would rather have lo- one less timeout. Um, You'd rather them have less Yeah, I, exactly. Okay. Yes, I would. Um, because, the, you know, you want to put yourself in a position to win the game down the stretch. And one of the ways you can do that when you're behind, if you're behind, is to lengthen the game. And you lengthen it by using your timeouts, making substitutions, offense, defense, so on and so forth. So um, look at Eral Penn. Look at those long arms and shoulders. This is a big possession right now. You're down six, out of the timeout. Let's see if they pound it inside or look for an open three from uh, either Penn or Flowers. Flowers against Thomas. Shot clock down to four. Wood picked up by Dutrell. He's got to get it off. It's a shot clock violation. It goes in, but it doesn't count for Keon Burns. And Sacred Heart dialed up the D. Yeah, and that's exactly what you don't want to see. You don't want to see out of a timeout, your team does not know how much time is on the shot clock. I just got through saying this is kind of a big possession, down six, under five, six minutes rather. You need to have something, either a basket or a free throw, and you get a turnover. Tyler Thomas, Sacred Heart by six. Thomas lost his dribble. And it's back to the Sharks. Tough turnover for Tyler Thomas. And that was accidental alliteration. I was not going for that. But it was a tough turnover for Tyler Thomas. Tough turnover, Tyler Thomas. <laughs> well, it's the simplest things that make me laugh these days. Erol Penn, straightaway three. No good. And this one goes to Flowers. He draws contact. Ty Flowers goes to the line with five minutes to go here in regulation. Okay, I'm going to put on my coaching hat right now. You look at E. Ralph Penn, who I talked about. Look at that shot there. You can't, that's a great replay, but the backboard's in the way. I want to make a point. His last two threes have been really flat. Okay? Okay. If you're going to shoot from that distance, the one, there's a couple of ways that you can make your shot soft. One of them has open ultimate backspin backspin softens your shot okay and the other thing is arc now he has great backspin but the last two threes it's almost like his hands on top of the ball it's got to be under the ball you remember those old-fashioned you're not as old as me but the old-fashioned phone boots on the street yeah you know well, you, you want to shoot out of the top so you're mm. you're, you're you got to shoot the ball up he's on top it, again it, it, it's it's a it's a um, a long way of me saying he needs arc on his shot. It reminds me, and I'm going to show my age now, 40 years old. But they, when I was a kid, there was a here in Connecticut a, a kind of famous commercial they used to play with Jim Calhoun. And do you remember this one? A good shot starts in your toes, oh. it ends in your fingertips. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, do you remember that one? Yeah, he's a Red Sox fan. That's not good. <laughs> Galette a three. It's good! Nico Galette with a huge three-pointer for the Pioneers. He's in a double figures with ten. It's a seven-point Sacred Heart lead. And you're tired of hearing me saying it. Sometimes it's not how many you make. It's when you make them. That's his first of the night. Four and a half to go in the second. Conte takes a three. That's a high arcer. No good. Dutrell with another rebound. Contavio Dutrell has 13 boards tonight. 
Think he's played his way back into some significant minutes? No bow to doubt it. <laughs> Clark lost the dribble. Now he got bumped by Burns. They let him play through it. And it ends up a turnover. Burns looking for the continuation as he gets fouled on the floor. Maybe hey, if this was the NBA. Hey, Randy, you know, I have I, – I told the referees before the game, you know, he's as a coach Latina. He's asking me, he goes, you do Fairfield games too? I said, yep, I do NEC games. I said, you know what, I prepare, I take this serious, but I don't take myself serious. So I'm going to pat myself on the back. With four minutes to go in the first half, LIU was six for 11 from three, okay? They are, they are now seven for 21. That's one for 10. What was one of my keys? Don't get three-point happy with this huge front line. I think the three helped them early, and I think it's hurt them late in this game. Nico Gallette with a steal leading to this possession. He finds Thomas driving baseline for the lay-in. Sacred Heart starting to pull away. Up by nine with 3.37 to go. And a timeout called by Derek Kellogg. The Pioneers have had a hard time finishing games. Right now, looking stronger as the game winds down. Turns into a full timeout. Sacred Heart looking to put LIU away in the NEC opener. Up by nine. Before the house, before the office, the late nights and new bosses. Before the last hugs, the wins and the losses. Before building the team, before building yourself. The rise and grinds, all day, every day. Before the letter, before the dream, there was a kid who loved to play. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. And for the first time in history, the Bryan Bulldogs are Northeast Conference champions. This LIU Sharks team shot the lights out early on, but the problem is the Pioneers were able to replace those light bulbs. <laughs> Have done a job defensively on the glass, out rebounding LIU 42 to 36, and then Sacred Heart has heated up and hit some big threes of their own. And Sacred Heart's actually made one more three than LIU. Actually, check that two more threes. Sacred Heart, 34% from downtown, 9 to 26. LIU is cooled right off, 7 for 25, good for 28%. Well, you know, you look at the numbers now, if you're LIU, nine point lead is essentially three possessions. So they got to dig in, they got to get stops, and they don't necessarily have to get threes. The problem is that. Twos will help them get closer, but there it is. They only have one timeout left, all right? So there may be a situation where they're going to have to go for threes a little earlier than you would in a normal game because you don't have time timeouts to stop that clock. But right now, they need a basket, a two or a three. Getting to the foul line would be even more important. You get to stop the clock and mount your comeback. Flowers inside, Conte to his left hand, the hook shot no good, and the foul stops the clock with 3.23 to go. I love the call, okay? See, no panic. This is what an experienced Coach Kellogg is. They go inside. Dutrell actually did a pretty good job in making Conte get the ball a little further from the post, okay? A little bit out of his comfort zone. But as he's backing in, you, if you have Sacred Heart, you don't want to double team because he might kick out for the three. But I like Derek Kellogg. And a timeout, getting the ball inside. And this is probably the best option. Sure, you want a three. But if you're not going to get a three, this is the best option. Getting to the line, hopefully to make two. He missed the first. And mounting your comeback, as I said just a second ago, with the clock stopped. So after the miss by Conte, you can almost see Anthony Latina thinking about the move. And when Conte missed, then he brought Bryce Johnson on the floor because that's four personals on Contavio Dutrell. So with a little bit of separation, the Pioneers with an eight-point lead here with 3.23 to go in the second. Looks like he's going to save Dutrell until he's a card that he might really need to play. Galette up and under. 
Good basket, Nico Gallette. 63-53, a 10-point lead for the Pioneers. And I asked Sacred Heart in one of my keys to maintain composure because I thought LIU would press more. They're pressing now like they should because they're behind. They didn't panic. They brought it over, got the ball to uh, to uh, Nico Gallette, and made a beautiful reverse layup. It's a great possession. Flowers is fouled by Thomas going for the steal. Under three minutes to go, the 10-point lead. Again, you didn't need it there. The last thing you need if you're Sacred Heart is to stop the clock. Yeah, you don't want to get, you don't need to gamble in that situation. So keep the man in force in front of you. Um, understand that, you know, if you're guarding a player like a Ty Flowers, your goal is to make him give up the ball. Okay, you don't want to send him to the foul line because he's 80% from the line. Again, he's probably the most talented player in the conference in terms of size and in terms of skills. He you know, gets the first free throw. You know what bothers me is like when I played uh, in the dark ages, back in <laughs> caveman ages, um, I used to work my tail off and sweat. And be, this guy doesn't even look like he sweats, right? I mean, it's just so easy for him. He does so many things well, and he does a lot of things that nobody in this league can do. His goal now uh, and the, is to get a deflection. Get a trap here. Uh, use a timeout, Sacred Heart. You got three to go. You don't want to turn the ball over here. They turn it over. Flowers. Oh! Going to throw it down. Clock is ticking, though. 63-57, but a big turnover there. The press from LIU. Bryce Johnson looking for some help. Finds a cutting AC. Aaron Clark, Nico Gallette, Tyler Thomas. Good ball movement. They could get it down to two if they wanted, but Clark's open for three. Looking for a dagger. In and out. Johnson crashes the glass, but Penn takes the rebound away. A huge possession here for LIU. It's a two-possession game. They get it inside for the lay-in by Penn and Anthony Latina. I think Coach Latina needs a timeout. He turned the ball over against the press. Gave up an easy two. It was almost a three-point play. Got a player without a shoe in the backcourt for LIU. Sacred Heart playing five on four right now. Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Trey Wood. <laughs> and he has gotten the sneaker back on. Shot clock down to 11. Clark off the window. Misses. And the rebound to Noble Crawford. Sacred Heart by four, but LIU is on a run. Here's Crawford for three. No good and a rebound for Alex Watson. And Aaron Clark very wisely says, let's play slow. One for five coming into the game. I'm not saying that was a bad shot. He's wide open. But at this point of the game, you got to play to your strengths, especially when you're behind. They can get the game clock down to about 105 before they have to take the shot. Shot clock is now at five. Thomas takes off, loses the basketball. And staying with Sacred Heart and Catavio Dutrell comes in right now with three on the shot clock. Yeah, they're going to have some. It's a, it's a good. Uh, what do we got here? Timeout. Timeout, Sacred Heart, Randy. It is Anthony Latina's timeout here with 108 to go in the second. He's got three, so he's going to use a full timeout here with two left. I we keep it here with 108 to go in regulation. LIU on this run here. Well, Sacred Heart had a. A pretty big lead, and it, it seemed rather comfortable, but LIU on a 6-0 run has cut it to a four-point game. I love the timeout because you had three, okay? And, and here's why. Um, you are got to design some sort of play to get the ball to the rim um, or get it to Clark or to Thomas. So you're not going to be able – you're not going to have enough time, you know – yeah, you, you know, you will be able, if you can get it to him, tell, here's my point. This is a huge possession on offense, okay? You don't necessarily, I'm going to back talk myself. You don't necessarily need something to the rim. You need to get something to Thomas or to Clark, okay, coming off a screen where they can penetrate and make a play. All right, that's number one. But I like the timeout also because you can talk about your defense. On a make or a miss, let's go zone. Um, I haven't seen Sacred Heart go zone his possession. Make sure you block out. So you got a chance to go over one offense, one defense, and and you got to tell your team, if you execute your best offensive play right here and score, and then execute your best play on defense and stop them, you got a great chance to win the game. 
Three on the shot clock. Inbounds and a beautifully drawn up and even better executed play on the inbounds pass to Gallette for the lay-in. They went to the quote-unquote, wasn't a lob at the rim, but it was a catch and shoot. If you're LIU, you got to put more pressure on the inbounder. That shot no good by Wood. Defensive rebound, Contavio Dutrell ripping it away from Flowers, and he's fouled. Randy, I, again, I'm going to put my coach in the hat. The worst place you can be when you're guarding an inbounder is in limbo, okay? You either got to pressure the man taking it out so you can get a deflection or a five-second violation, or you got to back up and play the play, which means back up and see who's cutting to the rim, take it away. When you stand in limbo and do nothing, you're making the passer a better passer and the cutter a better chance to catch and score. He missed the front end of a one and one, so LIU is breathing with 45 seconds to go. It's a two possession game, and they give it to Flowers. He gets it inside to Penn. His layup no good. And the rebound by Nico Gallette. They've got to foul him, and Trey Wood does with 34.4 on the clock. Where, where was Nico going? You don't want to take a shot in that situation. You get it over half court, you know, stop. Obviously, he got fouled, but he looked like he had scoring on his mind. A great defensive stance, by the way, by Sacred Heart. They looked for the three. They gave Ty Flowers a double ball screen, a staggered ball screen going to his strong side, his left side. Sacred Heart took it away. Great play there. They went inside to Penn. They were able to stop him without fouling. Another great. So two great stops on the defensive end. Now they got to capitalize with some free throws. Nico Gallet hits the front end. 66-59, Sacred Heart, and Gallette has put together a quiet 15 points tonight. Sat most of the first half with three fouls, only played played under seven minutes. So he's between Dutrell in the first half and Gallette in the second half. They got production from their inside guys. You're not kidding. Gallette with 16 and eight rebounds. Dutrell. Whoa. Ty Flowers shot that one from Bridgeport. <laughs> Way downtown, and he keeps his team alive. A long three to make it a five-point game from 27.4 seconds to go in regulation. Yeah, just a big-time NBA. That was beyond an NBA three. That's the last time out by LIU. We had mentioned earlier about that... Uh, timeout call by Trey Wood when they had the arrow. You look at the Sacred Heart bench here. Okay, so let's play coach. If you're, if you're LIU, what I would do right now is put your biggest guy in the ball, okay, and and, and try and get a deflection. Try and put, try and also uh, um, you look at the Sacred Heart bench again, Sean Hone, but um, you, you want to get a deflection or you want to be uh, you want to be you want to distract the passer from getting an easy pass. So your job is to really shadow him. He's probably going to run the baseline. I would then go, Randy, with my four quickest guys, okay? And I would deny all four of those guys and switch everything, trying to get a five-second violation. Now, the unfortunate thing for LIU, if you get the ball, you don't have your, you might not have your best offensive team, but they need a steal, and you got to foul right away, okay? You can't even worry about who to foul. You can't let clock kick off. Now, if you're Sacred Heart, uh, again, I would run the baseline, alleviate yourself from some of that pressure on the guy in the inbounder, and I would maybe uh, do a misdirection, have a lot of stuff happen strong side, the sign of the ball, then run weak side with maybe the one-on-one -on -one isolation and get the ball to Thomas or get the ball to Aaron Clark, your better shooters. Not a bad idea to throw long. You better be wide open, though, if you're going to throw it long. All of that because Flowers... Keeps the door cracked open for LIU. He has 33 points. That's a season best. Five three-pointers. We've made the point a few times, Joe. He's the best player on the floor, maybe the most talented in this league. He was not even the best player on his high school basketball team. Played with Mustafa Heron at Sacred Heart. Flowers commits the foul going for the steal as they go for the full-court press. Mustafa was a terrific player. Went to Auburn, then transferred to St. John's. Yep. Not quite sure of where he is, but he's not in the NBA. He might be a G League or it might be, uh, he's making money somewhere. I, I thought LIU had an opportunity there to get a five second count. They had Clark uh, bottled up in that corner. He was able to get rid of it. Good job by Latina making sure that Aaron Clark got the ball. He's the guy you want with the ball.
Watson can't get the first one to go. And that means even if he hits it, it'll remain a two-possession game. Now, here's what I'm talking about. Because you don't have a timeout, if he makes this, you're going to need threes. If he misses a quick two and you you don't have a timeout, that's a problem. But you should knock the ball away, quote-unquote, inadvertently to stop the clock. He missed both. And so the clock is down to 20. Sacred Heart leads by five. Wood with a basketball. Flowers a three. Too strong. Back tap to Flowers again. Another three. Also too strong. Watson, one more back tap to Wood. Eight seconds. Flowers a three. It's good. He keeps on shooting. Five seconds to go. They need a foul. And Clark is fouled in the backcourt with 4.2 seconds to go here in regulation. But, (laughs) man, oh, man, Ty Flowers is some player. 36 and he's got his sixth three-pointer to make it a two-point game. How about Eral Penn getting two offensive rebounds and tipping it out to Ty Flowers each time? Now, I'm not going to ask you this question, but ask yourself this. Would you rather have a quick two by Trey Wood, who's terrific, and have all that time left, or knock down a three after you wasted about, I don't know what the clock was, about 20 seconds? So it's a good question to ask yourself. But this, I said it early. I said it often. At the end of the game, no disrespect to Tyler, Thomas, this is a guy that you want with the ball because he has the most ability to make a play for yourself or your teammate. He makes both free throws and opens up a four-point lead. 69-65 Sacred Heart, 17 for Aaron Clark. And Anthony Latina is going to use a timeout here to just remind his team of some sensibility here. No fouls, back off. Let him hit a three. We're up by four. We got 4.2 to go before we got to win. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. This is me. If I was LIU, I would not shoot a three here. Because by the time you catch it, shoot it, it's going to bring you probably every second. What I would do is set up a long pass to Flowers, Penn, Conte under the rim. No one's going to foul you. Throw it, catch it, and score in one second. Again, you don't have a timeout left. But again, you haven't been warned. Knock the ball away. That will stop the clock. You then can set up a press, see if you get a five-second violation. If you're counting on getting a three and getting fouled, it ain't going to happen. Remember about 10 minutes ago when I asked you if you'd rather have the possession right, arrow or right. the timeout? Right now, you want the timeout. That possession arrow has stayed with LIU since that timeout by Wood when he hit the floor, and they could really use it here. Joe, they're going to run your play, and Aaron Clark's going to come up with a basketball, and Sacred Heart has a win in the conference opener. They begin Northeast Conference play with a win over 